Welcome, everybody. We are coming to you live from not so sunny Michigan. Actually, the brand team for Media Vine is on a retreat here. We're in Saugatuck. It's absolutely beautiful. We're on Lake Michigan, but we're getting a lot of um, clouds and they descended right before we started. So that's what you're, you're seeing Michigan wilderness from the windows behind me. That's what that's a different landscape than the typical places that I am broadcasting from. But we're so excited to have you guys with us. We are winding down the summer. It's hard to believe, but it's happening. And we are making sure that the summer of live is going out with a bang. This month of August, we are all about the green. So we're covering as many monetization strategies as we can to get you ready to make it rain when Q4 rolls around. Today, we're talking about a metric, which is actually the metric in digital advertising. And bonus, it's another acronym. We know how much we love those in digital advertising. <laughs> RPM has become the king of all the metrics with bloggers when they're comparing their earnings. It's actually, in case you were wondering, it's short for revenue per milli. RPM is your earnings accrued for every 1,000 units. Milli actually means 1,000 in Latin. And it's the most commonly used metric in measurement in online advertising. It is the publisher side of CPM, which is cost per milli, which is what the advertising side uses. And both of my amazing guests are killing it in the RPM game, and they are here to give their tips to you. I'm going to introduce them. Again, if you have questions about RPM, optimizing RPM, we're going to cover all those strategies for you, what they're doing that's making it work for them. And if you have specific questions about what they're doing, what we're talking about, please post them in the comments. I will make sure. But let me introduce them first. Dorothy Kern is first. She started Crazy for Crust in 2010. She's been blogging for a, quite a long time to start her love of baking. And she expanded to all the foodstuffs in 2017. Her work has been featured in and on Rachel Ray Magazine, Women's World Magazine, CookingChannel.com, BuzzFeed, Redbook, and many more. She's also done live segments on Good Day Sacramento and Studio 40. She's a born and bred Californian and currently resides in Sacramento with her husband, Mel, daughter, Jordan, and their fur baby. Welcome to the Media Mind Summer of Live, Dorothy. We're glad to have you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And then my other guest is Lance Cothern. He actually holds a CPA license in Virginia and started what would become his successful site, Money Manifesto, in 2012, yeah. another longtime blogger. He and his wife documented their journey when paying back $80,000 in student loan debt in three years. Yes, that is possible. He left the corporate world to begin blogging full-time in 2015. In addition to running his blog, he freelance writes for sites like the US News and World Report, Credit Karma, and more. He lives in Panama City Beach, Florida with his wife and almost three-year-old son. Lance, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, appreciate it. Thank you for coming, both of you. And we have California and Florida. We've got both sides of the world and I am in Michigan. So we're, we're, doing, we're covering the states, it's very exciting. All right. First, we're just going to start with a little bit of background. I'm going to have you guys talk a little bit about yourselves and tell us about your sites, why you started them, and kind of your journey and your transition with them. So, uh, Dorothy, can we start with you? Sure. Um, I've been um, doing this, like you said, since 2010. It's been almost nine years. Um, and I, I don't really know why I started. I kind of just did. Um, okay. It was one of those faith things, I guess. I just was like, I needed something. My daughter went to kindergarten. I needed something to do. And um, I loved dessert, so um, I decided to just do desserts because I had seen Bakerella do it, and I was like, well, she can do it, I can do it. So um, I didn't even know anything about blogging. I didn't know anything about recipes, and I didn't know anything about like advertising or that you could make money blogging when I started. Yeah. So um, I've kind of worked through the years just learning every little bit. I remember back, um, it was like two years after I started, or a year and a half after I started, I made like $24. Like from um, ads, you know, it was like Google ads or something. Right. And it was like, oh my gosh, you know, I can make money. Oh my God, this is so great. We're going to TGI uh, Fridays. Right. Dinner. Yes, exactly. And uh, from there, it just kind of went. And then I, you know, a few years ago, I really started focusing on just growing the site and growing my page views and becoming more of a resource um, for people um, to keep them coming back, really. Um, and that's kind of when I noticed um, the RPMs doing better. Fantastic. Lance, same question to you, please. Um, I started reading a bunch of personal finance blogs in college, but didn't really start my own blog till a few years later. Um, once I started, it was just kind of a fun thing for us to document our journey. And then I ended up getting a couple sponsorships, started putting ads on my blog and realized I could really make money doing it. Um, as you mentioned, I left my full-time accounting job in 2015 to move to blogging and freelance writing full-time. Um, I still split my time between the two, but both provide very decent income. 
Uh, but just over the years, I've worked on growing my site. To, so hopefully I can move to just managing my blog in the future. So that's my main goal and where I've been and where I'm going. Fantastic. Goals are very important. So with uh, we've talked about all the different revenue streams, but today it's just about ads. So talk to us a little bit about your journey with ads. Uh, both of you, I'm going to ask both people. Start with Lance. What's the difference when you came to Mediavine? Just talk to us about ads in general. Uh, Dorothy, you said you made $23 initially. So it's all very, but ads are clearly an important part of your monetization strategy. Tell us about that journey. And we'll start with you, Lance. So uh, back a long time ago, probably in 2013, I did what most bloggers do and I put AdSense on my blog. Um, initially, it paid what I thought was decent, um, but over time, the earnings started going downhill uh, per thousand page views or sessions and really kind of got um, disappointed by that. So I switched to another company and it was the same thing. It popped up in the beginning and then started going downhill. But um, then in 2017, I was at FinCon talking with a bunch of other publishers asking, you know, what do you guys do for ads? Are they really worth it? And Mediavine kept popping up and I went and talked to you guys that I believe you had a booth there and yeah. applied right afterwards. And I was amazed in the beginning at the RPMs I was getting from you guys. And since then, I want to say from the beginning, it's probably double or triple from what I originally started with. So I put in some work to make that happen and you guys have done a lot on your end as well. Um, but ads are definitely a significant portion of my website income and I'm very thankful for the service you guys provide. Well, you're welcome. I know <laughs> I did not personally do it, nor do I have, I was not at the beginning, but we it's really exciting to hear that that's been a, a good experience for you and that we were able to change the game for you a little bit with your earnings. So same question to you, Dorothy, from $23, I'm guessing you're not making $23 anymore, yep. which is exciting. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I bounced around like originally, um, I think it was through like, you know, one of those networks that they used to have like before it was, you know, Mediavine and the other companies, uh, one of those um, the blogging network type things. Mm -hmm. um, I bounced around a couple of those and it was just, I mean, it was fine. I didn't, again, I didn't know that you could make money doing this. So it was like every month it was, it would go up and it was great. Um, and then I, I guess it was three years ago now it was the first Mediavine conference. I wasn't with Mediavine, but I went because I had friends that were going and I just, I loved the, um, I loved the company and I loved the people and I felt like it was so much more personal. Um, and that's why I switched. And I felt like I became like a person, not just a number. Um, and from then it was just kind of all the help that you guys give. So, you know, site speed and SEO information and all those things got me thinking like, oh, like I can do all these things um, to kind of make it better. And I just went from there and, you know, it's just grown consistently since then. I mean, I put a lot of work into growing it and SEO and all of that, but starting off from because of all the inspiration you guys and the help that you guys give. So speaking about, because both of you have seen growth, significant growth in that RPM, and I know that, that you've both put a lot of work into it. I want to talk specifically about the work that you put into it. So when you started maximizing that RPM, how did you start doing that? How did you start attacking it? And, and Dorothy, we'll start with you. Okay. Um, I mean, honestly, when you, at, when, I, when you guys asked me to be on this, I was like, hmm, I don't really pay attention to my RPM. Maybe that's like not, I mean, I don't, I just don't like. I do check it and I do look and all that, but it's not something that's I'm like, oh, what I focus on is creating better content, being a resource to my readers, working on SEO, site speed, all those things. And in working on all of those things, that has caused my RPM to increase. Um, I think that just doing all those, you know, things is what makes it better. And so all the services that you guys have provided and all the things that I've learned, I'm applying that and that is a result of, of it. That is perfect. I don't. I don't know if he's creeping. If Eric is on here, he's got to be creeping. I know Amber is on here too. That hearing things that that everything we recommend, we're not going to recommend anything that is going to make you a quick buck. We're not going to say something right. that well, this will bump your RPM right away. Right. Reader experience and being a better resource for your readers and, and providing a better um, a better time for them when they visit your site. And and that's so great to hear that you work. Keep your focus on them, but that the byproduct of that is your RPM goes up, which is amazing. Yep, exactly. Lance, same question to you, please. Um, 
I'm all for a reader experience too, but at the same time, I'm a personal finance blogger, so I like money. Um, we all and do. When <laughs> I first started um, with Mediavine, I really hadn't optimized any of my stuff. Um, and Mediavine's really helpful with a lot of resources, the Facebook group, the dashboard. And the first thing I focused on was the dashboard. They have the health checks in the top right corner. And I don't remember if teal was a thing back then or if it was just green. Um, that was new, it was green at first, definitely. But first I went for green and then I ended up getting teal, but I really focused on the tips that you guys had put in as far as making my articles longer, which is also good for my users going more in depth. And I really focused on my top 10 articles because that's where all my page views are and that's where all the ads are being shown. So if I could put my time toward that, that provided the biggest return. Um, but I shortened my paragraphs so people could get through the article faster, which also lengthened it. I added images and I even um, increased my text size because it was kind of small. And that's just super easy way to make your post longer and also make your post a lot easier to read, especially on mobile. Um, you don't want to go out of control, but within reason, it's definitely very helpful because my text was way too small. So um, those were the big things I did to start maximizing my RPM. Amazing, love it. So I know we actually do have a blog post about increasing your font size. So if we can share that, that would be amazing. We talk about that, We it's one of the best, but, but it's truly, again, yes, it's an easy way to bump your RPM. At the same time, it is all about the people that are coming to you on their mobile device and they're having a hard time reading your text on their phones. So you're making a better user experience for them. And money is just a happy, happy byproduct. So if somebody wanted to increase their, well, I actually wanted to dive a little bit deeper into the to what you were just saying, Lance. You said you really worked on lengthening your content and you do it with your top 10 articles. Is this something that you're assessing which when your top 10 are, or how often are you going in and looking at your top 10? Because they do change. Do you have, do you see fluctuation in that? And how often are you assessing those top 10? Um. I probably go in and look once a month to see if something new popped up. Um, my top 10 are fairly stable for the most part because I write a lot of evergreen content and personal finance, a lot of stuff doesn't really change a ton. Um, and it's not as trendy, I guess. So I don't have to evaluate that as often. But if you see something popping up in your top 10, I would definitely at least take a look at it and see how you can optimize it and whether you think it's gonna continue happening um, or if it's just a seasonal thing that my traffic popped up today, but tomorrow's a holiday, so it's gonna be gone. It might not be worth your effort, but if it's um, more of a long-term thing, then I would definitely take a look at the top 10 there. Fantastic, okay, D Dorothy, what about you? I Do you have more seasonality happening with your top 10, with your popular posts? Um, actually, um, I started thinking about things um, in the other, I used to do so much like off the wall stuff or seasonal content. And then when I started realizing that you know, if I want to be a resource, like, you know, you need to have stuff that people search all the, all the time. And especially because I started out until just a couple of years ago, I was just doing dessert. Um, right. People don't search for dessert as much as they search for like chicken recipes. So I had to like have content on there that, you know, everyone needs a chocolate chip cookie recipe. And so that's, um, I kind of started focusing on that. And so when I stop, I'd still do seasonal content because as a food blogger, seasonality is a, something that's really big, you know, like 4th of July, Christmas, those things. But I definitely, on my off season, I'm trying to do a ton of things that are evergreen. And I think that that is a really important step um, in getting that consistent traffic, um, which will help, it might, whether or not it helps your RPMs, it will definitely help your bottom line. Um, and so I think that that's really important also. Yeah, absolutely true. And having that content that, yeah, is not only that spikes during the seasons, but something no matter what, people like chocolate chip right. cookies and right. how to, you know, do their taxes or whatever it is that you're right. posting about. So I think for Evergreen all the time you wanna have that. Mm -hmm. We had uh, Melissa Chapman pot chimed in with something, uh, she was loving what you were talking about, Dorothy. She said, I became a person, not just a number that would be, that should be the Mediavine tagline. And mm -hmm. you share that, oh, thank you. And we appreciate that, Melissa. We can maybe get that on a t-shirt, that would be good. <laughs> and then uh, Jennifer Auer said, I would be curious to know what your average, are, both of you, your average RPM is and how much fluctuation do you see from month to month? So before we start, before we dive into this, I knew this would be a thing, I knew this would be a question. And one of the big things that we always talk about and preach over and over here is do not compare RPMs. 
Right. The reason why we say, okay, so I'm gonna hear your answer. Why do you think it's important not to compare RPMs? Because we know that that people love to do this in the Facebook groups, compare mm -hmm. their RPM with have people. Post your RPM, what are you making? Uh, why do you guys think that that's not necessarily the most effective way to go about optimizing? I mean, I think every, every, everyone's site's different. So everyone's gonna, everyone has different content. Everyone has different readers. Um, everyone has readers that come to them for different reasons. And I think that um, when it comes to the advertisers and all that, everything is just so different. It's like apples and oranges. You can't compare even a, you for sure can't compare one company to another. Um, and you definitely, but, but even within the same company, unless your site is very similar to someone else's, um, you're not going to be able to compare your RPMs with them very easily. Even if your content is similar, that does not right. mean your audience is similar. Exactly. You can have totally right. different demographics, which right. drastically change how the advertisers want to spend on you. So even if right. you are both writing about um, how to construct um, historical buildings out of Play-Doh, you might have different age demographics or different right. uh, something like that, which means that the advertisers aren't spending the same. So it's never exactly. an apples to apples comparison when you're talking about RPM. Uh, Lance, right. do you is that something that finance bloggers that you find a lot they're wanting to know what your RPM is and do a do a comparison like that? I mean, it's definitely a topic that comes up, but I sure. think we understand that each website's different. They show different ad densities. That's going to affect your RPM. Um, I might turn my ads off on a page because it's really affiliate heavy. And if that's 10% of my traffic, that's going to tank my RPM some. Um, you really have to look at it from an advertiser's perspective. If I have a post where somebody's ready to buy something, my guess is they'd probably pay more to advertise on that post. And if it's a really high dollar product and their acquisition cost is really high, they're going to pay more to put that ad there. So it really depends on your niche, where you are in the sales process, if they can determine that, and just like how many ads you're running on your site. So it's definitely not an apples to apples comparison by any means. You have to look at a lot of other factors. So fantastic. How much of a fluctuate, seasonal fluctuation though do you see in that? And we're gonna get to your question in a minute, Lindsay, but how, um, we're gonna talk, we're gonna get back to the RPM question as well, but how much of a seasonal fluctuation do you see, Lance, throughout the year? So, um, January is the lowest for me and I think for a lot of other people um, and Q4 can be higher for me. Um, a lot of people really want to fix their finances in January. So that's kind of a bummer for me that the RPMs are lower. Um, but I would say probably, you know, 20 to 40% from lowest to highest, just depending on the seasonality where the ad budgets are, stuff like that. And, and Lance, so I'm going to guess that your, your drop in January is probably much less significant than Dorothy's drop because food bloggers are getting a lot of the Q4 to Q1 mm -hmm. drop. People aren't going to read about baking as much. While your content is consistent with the way that people are uh, consuming it, the the reason why the RPM drops in January is just because of the way the advertisers are spending and it has nothing to do with your content. So there's things that you can control and then there's things that you can't control. And one of the things you can control is your niche and the content that you're creating. Um, Dorothy, can you answer the same question? What kind of a fluctuation do you see in RPM throughout the year? I mean, I think mine usually will go, it's usually, I don't know percentage. Um, again, like creative mind over here. Um, sure. <laughs> but it's more, It's I would say it's a $10 fluctuation from lowest to highest, 10 to $15, right. depending on the time of year. Um, I'm definitely higher in Q4, definitely lower in first quarter. Um, and I notice those, I mean, the biggest times I notice it is when it's like July, you know, or those months of the year where we know, and you guys warn us, don't forget, it's going to be lower. Um, and that's when I really notice it for the most part, it kind of stays somewhat consistent, except during those times of the year where, um, food is really more popular than others. And I'm trying to change that a little bit for myself because I'm doing more food now, not just dessert. So right. I want to be a resource all year long, and I'm hoping that that will also affect um, the RPMs. That's a great strategy to go about changing, just changing your content, making yourself more of a, a resource for your readers year round instead of right. a, a, fo a focused time. Right. So we have Lindsay Jones Kmet says, what is the highest though? I like if I am at a $21 or $28 plus RPM, am I already as high as I'm going to get? Because then I can chill on trying to increase RPM and focus more on content. Um, so we just posted the ad revenue by the seasons. I don't, 
I would hesitate to say for myself, and I think that many of my colleagues would agree with me, I don't know that there's ever you would say that this is the number and it's as high as you're ever going to go. I think optimization right. works at every level, whatever your RPM is. What are, what are you guys' opinions? Lance, we'll start with you. I mean, with RPM, it's one of those things where there's definitely a payback when you're doing the easy stuff. But when you start getting into some of the nitty gritty, if you're only seeing your RPM slightly increase, that may be because of you or maybe because the advertisers. Um, I mean, if there's low hanging fruit or things you know you need to do to make your website better that will help that, go ahead and do it. But if you're just trying to tweak it for a couple pennies here and there, or maybe another dollar or two, could your time be better spent getting more traffic or something like that? So I think, you know, optimize it to the best of your ability, take care of the low hanging fruit, but at some point you have to try to grow other ways as well and let Mediavine work on increasing the ad spend and growing bigger and that'll help your blog as well. Can you talk a little bit about low hanging fruit? Give me a definition of what you mean by that. Right. So like if you're, for instance, if your text size is really small, bumping that up a couple of font sizes, I mean, that's, it takes like five or 10 minutes or you can hire somebody to do it in five or 10 minutes. Um, if you know your, one of your highest traffic posts is super short and you could add a bunch of detail and it's not going to like tank your search rankings or whatnot, um, go ahead and do that, you know, but if you're, trying to figure out how to just do little tiny things like you're you've gone through all the stuff that media vines recommended and now you're trying to come up with even more i mean media vines going to let us know you know what they've seen working for other people and if you start trying to get beyond that it may may or may not be as beneficial dorothy same question to you um i like go for teal i mean that's kind of like i just try to always make sure that everything that it's optimized that like and if it's not, if for some reason it's not teal anymore, then I have to ask myself like, why? what is wrong? What has changed? What What's going on? What do I need to do? Making the post longer, increasing the font size, those are all things. Um, I do know like if you're concerned and you're not sure, like I don't, I, again, I don't focus on RPM, but all the things I focus on give the byproduct is that the RPM is goes up or whatever it is. So I would definitely say go for, you know, if you're looking at to increase to SEO or, you know, create some content that you know that your readers are going to like, like try and maybe diversify, maybe look at your audience. Like I know my audience skews older and I'm like, okay, how do I get like millennials or where it's at? Right. Like we want this under 40 crowd. And I'm like, I get these grandmas emailing me, which is great. I love it. But like, you know, that's not the demographic. So like, what do I need to do? Do I need to get on Instagram stories? Do I need to do something like, what do I need to do to bring that audience in? That is, you know, what that demographic is going to be. So it's sounding like you spend a whole lot of time analyzing things like demographics, uh, duration, origin of your audience, where they're coming to you from. Where Do you have any quick tips, Dorothy, on how you got into that? It sounds like you spend a lot of time in analytics and search console. What I do is I um, I have, I really, it's once a month that I look at it. Um, and it started out because I need to have a, me a new media kit each month. So then I started looking at that. Um, and then someone in some group somewhere shared a like a uh, spreadsheet that they use and it breaks down every, so it's, so every month on the first, I have a calendar notification. Even if I'm on a trip, I'm like, stop what I'm doing and I'm going to do this. And I, you know, it goes through social, it goes through, um, you know, RPMs, it goes through all the traffic and it gives me, lets me, before that, I was just kind of like, oh, what's my traffic today? I wasn't very like in depth. With it. Right. And so now I'm like at least once a month, if not more. I am looking to see like, and then I can look at patterns and I've been doing this for like eight months now. So uh, I wish I would have been doing it for eight years, but you know, hindsight. Um, and so I can look and see, well, where are the patterns? Where am I growing? And all that sort of thing. Okay. Lan Lance, will you, same kind of question to you. Are you going into Google analytics? How are you spending time analyzing your demographic, looking at that type of data? I mean, I definitely go into my, analytics and I look around and see what's doing well and what's not. Um, I probably don't spend as much time analyzing as I should. Um, but for me, most of my traffic's from search. So I'm trying to make sure that, you know, I'm not doing anything that Google is going to penalize me for. And if I start seeing a decrease in the rankings on one of my posts, I look to see, is there a reason why maybe somebody wrote a better post and I need to update mine. Um, but I don't focus so much on the demographic side of things, even though I know I probably should. Well, if you're working on creating evergreen content and demographics is, I mean, I think finance is something that impacts everybody pretty right. much yeah. across the board. Right. So I think it's less of a, it's demographics focus can be 
a double-edged sword and can be niche dependent for sure. Uh, Michelle Erderbrosia said, don't forget to back to go back and compare to last year when you're looking at RPMs. Mm -hmm. And yes. that is eye-opening and will make you see what you that you've seen improvement in RPM overall. Do you guys do year over year comparisons with your RPM? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll do it like a lot of times I'll just do it because I'll look it's not necessarily the RPM, but I'll think about page views or I'll think about income. And then I, if I, especially if I'm in one of those like funks where I'm like, oh, I'm not growing, like nothing's changing. And then I look back, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm crazy because I am it's a good way to look back and compare. Uh, Lance, what about you? Yeah, I definitely think that's important. Um, thankfully for me, my RPMs have been going up um, over the same month in the prior year. A lot of times I'm doing work, but you guys are also releasing new tools like script wrappers or I add a video to my site. And, you know, when I add a video to my site and I only added a reader's favorite video, that's like on every post. And that added a lot of ad opportunity and that's increased my RPMs over last year. So it's not really an apples to apples comparison, but I can still know that, hey, it's at least not going down. It's definitely going up. So. That is super exciting to hear. And we actually, I actually had a question about it a little bit later, but um, I was going to ask, have you guys implemented video on your site? And Lance, that's, so you have one video and you've seen it, that one video has made that much of a difference in your RPM. Yeah, um, it's definitely added uh, a decent amount to my RPM. The R or the video ads have higher RPMs in general. Mm -hmm. And honestly, um, somebody I was working with, Bob Lodick, said, hey, you know, they'll make a reader's favorite video for you. And then you can just post it on your site. And it's great for your readers because it um, gives them the opportunity to explore other posts on your site. So if they're done reading that article, it goes see something else and just an ad plays before it. And I was like, OK, well, you know, I, I know I should get into video, but I am just not a big video person. Uh, and when I turned it on, it was just like, amazing that I was making a few extra hundred bucks a month just for setting something up that you guys created for me. So that was awesome. That's awesome and amazing to hear. So even just one video, you guys, and we actually have a Teal Talk. When we go back to Teal Talk in the fall, we're actually having a guest from Animoto talk, Jeff Kossin, who's going to talk about ways that you can make you people in the finance niche specifically can use video like a great tits video to really increase their RPM without having to go hire a crew or film in front of a million people or get a studio or hire it out. You can just create that greatest hits video and you're, it's a great experience for your readers, but also helps you with your bottom line as well. Uh, Karen Reisberg, Reinsberg just asked, how long is your video, Lance? Uh, I think it's like 30 seconds or something. Mm -hmm. It has my five posts that I want people to read and it directs them where to search for them. And then when they search the term that's on the video, it pops up as the first post on my site. Fantastic. Okay, Dorothy, video question to you. Has it made yeah. a difference? Has it, has it been a big yeah. game changer? You're just like, ah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I started doing video a few years, like, gosh, 2016, I think. And I mean, like, I don't love it. I mean, I love, I like it. It's just, it's it's a lot of extra work. And I, you know, it's just one of those things where I started doing it because Facebook wanted it and then Google wanted it. And if Google wants it, then I know that advertisers probably want it. Um, and I know that if I'm doing good on Google, my RPMs are gonna do better. I'm gonna make more money anyway. Um, and I do like, I have the fa a favorites video, um, which I didn't have before. And so I did notice a difference in that, like when I turned that one on. Um, and for those of you out there who are like, but I don't have videos, I don't have equipment um, and all that, like you could do a slideshow video for a post. Like there's no reason why, like, I, I don't know, you can't quote me on Google cause I'm not sure what they, if in my mind, there's like some little guy in the Google algorithm. It's like, that's not a video. It's a slideshow. Who knows? But um, <laughs> it's one of those things. Where, I think like, that's as, probably scientifically <laughs> accurate. But like, for at least if you could have something in your post that is a video, it will be, if you can use the video players and all that sort of thing, it's definitely going to help. So make a slide. If you do process shots, if you're a food or craft or whatever blogger, um, or if you're doing a roundup like um, post or something, make a slideshow for it. It's easy and it's not hard to do those at least. So uh, fantastic. We're talking about the video. Okay. So Sarah Scott Averett said, is there any chance you could share that spreadsheet, Dorothy, that yeah. is checking on all those things? She will share it. Yeah. Uh, in addition, we also have a, ch a way to go back into your uh, checking your spreadsheets, way to analyze your Google Analytics in our RPM challenge. And we can share all of those posts as well. Um, 
So Michelle um, Brosius also said, Jennifer Auer, make sure to read those Mediavine posts about how to change things and ask for help from Mediavine more than once because it's sounding like Jennifer said she's done all the things. She's checked her RPM for July 2019. She said it's lower than 2018, even though she had 120,000 more sessions. Jennifer, email in. Let us do a deep dive. Let our amazing publisher support team do what they're incredible at and check, the, check your site out. Go check out your top posts and give you some help there. Um, Yes, Michelle is echoing me or preceding me. I didn't read you first, but she said, ask Mediavine for help, all caps, do it. Um, Michelle Price says, dumb question. It's never a dumb question. On the best of video, when we upload, on the best of video, not best of video. Uh, when we upload videos, they need to have a URL of a home post for that. But if it's a favorites, how do we do that? That's part of why she hasn't done it, although she does have some video on um, posts already. Uh, just do either of you have that or any ideas on that? We've been posting things in the comments. Um, I'm not sure. I have one of those videos, but I don't remember where it links. <laughs> I'd have to go look. Okay. I asked you guys what to do and you told me and I did it. So <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Well, we've been showing, we actually just have a, we have a blog post on sharing and how to make a featured video. It talks about all that stuff. So please read those posts and make sure that you are following. We do have instructions on how to do all of those things. Um, okay, let me, I'm gonna return back to some of the questions I have here. So if somebody wants to increase their RPM today, we talked about some of those easier things to do, which increasing font size, um, Make, getting shorter pair, making shorter paragraphs, all those things are kind of the easy things to do. Do you have any other tips on how to um, increase your RPM today? Lance, let's start with you. Um, I know desktop and mobile are very different, but on desktop, um, if you have a sidebar, there's that sticky sidebar add unit. If you don't have a sidebar, adding that will, adding a sidebar will make your main content um, a little less wide, which will automatically make it longer, and you get to take advantage of the sticky sidebar um, add unit. Um, I've turned the top units off because I optimized for desktop, um, so I don't have that top sidebar add anymore. Um, but the sticky sidebar add has definitely been uh, one of the higher performing add units. Okay, so uh, Dorothy, same to you. Um, I definitely recommend if I think most people have it, but the recipe card um, or uh, whatever card you have, if you're using create or whatever, use the, make sure you put the, an ad in there. Cause that's definitely like where your readers are going to go to that. And that's where they're going to stay. And that's why, like, I think that the sticky one is just stuck there. Like when people go to that one. So, and making sure that the sidebar doesn't have too much stuff in it. That was really hard for me. Cause you know, back in the day I had my favorites and I had my like buttons to things that I really liked and all these things. And it was really hard for me to give up all that stuff. But when I did, like it, it was, they told me that for a reason. Cause it does, then they see the ad, the ad's sticky and it moves more instead of getting through all the fluff before you get to the ads. So yeah, so the thing with that sticky sidebar, and this only applies to desktop traffic as Lance was saying, and it's different than mobile mm -hmm. and the majority of us have the majority right. of the traffic is mobile. But with your desktop, yeah, that sticky sidebar ad is one of our top placements and our highest paying placements because it refreshes with the premium ad every 30 seconds. So the quicker that your reader can get to that ad, meaning the shorter your sidebar is, the more money you're gonna be able to earn with each person that's reading. So uh, what, we, what we recommend, and Heather always does, she's the queen of this, but using a heat map, and we actually have mm -hmm. a blog post, I believe we have a blog post about that, but get a, use a heat map and find where people actually are interacting with your content and what's valuable in your sidebar and just start pulling things out. If people mm -hmm. aren't reading it, and I know that that's hard, like Dorothy said, it's like pulling off a Band-Aid, you gotta pull the stuff, but if people aren't reading it, then all you're doing is just, you're just leaving money on the table, keeping people mm -hmm. from getting to that sidebar. What, was there an aha moment for you, Dorothy, that allowed you to, to rip off the Band-Aid and pull things out of your sidebar? I think I probably had a conversation with Amber or somebody about it and it was just like, okay, fine, I'll do it. <laughs> and did and you it see worked. an immediate difference? I, like it worked? I did see a difference. I, yeah. Cause I definitely think that that it helps. Yeah, it does. It does. All right. Um, do, did you guys, either of you, we just talked about an aha moment with your sidebar. Did either of you have an aha moment in general that, that where you found a game changing RPM tip other than just the sidebar thing, anything for mobile. Uh, I mean, we've talked about video being a huge thing. We've talked about shortening that sidebar. Are there any other moments where you went, oh yeah, I could do that. And it really changed the game for you. 
Um, I know like I use headings like for it's for SEO, but mm -hmm. and I, I do notice. And again, like I probably should know this, but every time when I look at my site, every time there's always an ad where there's a heading. And so I'm not sure if that's something that's getting thrown in because of, you know, you guys, or if it's just, uh, you know, happenstance, but I do think that break, breaking up the content gives more breaks for ads to be put in there. Fantastic. On Answer. mobile, I mean, yeah. On mobile, yeah, for sure, because yeah. that's your only way to monetize really on mobile right. is with those in-content ads. So the more you break up, the more allowed, uh, more that you're allowed to have those ads occurring within the content mm -hmm. of your post. Lance, what about you? I didn't look at the before and after the RPM and it was a longer process, but um, I know you guys harp on site speed a lot. And if mm -hmm. your site loads faster, your ads can load faster. Um, so that was something I started working on and I definitely think it has helped me. I just didn't measure it when it happened, but I mean, right. I think that's something that's very important. Well, I think sites, I mean, well, where it is from, from CEO, Eric Hochberger, site speed is everything. And it's what we focus on. It's how we built the ad technology that Mediavine uses and we put on our own site. Loading faster. It's also for, I mean, everyone is paying attention to site speed. We actually have a blog post called Site Speed Should Be Weighing Into All of the Decisions, and it's weighing into decisions for people, for uh, social media providers like Pinterest. And uh, Google obviously pays attention to site speed. So there's so much that site speed has. Like we can we have a we have a litany of site speed posts and videos, and but it's definitely a factor. Um, Lance, tell mm -hmm. me how you went about working on your site speed. How did you attack that? How long of a process was it? Because some people feel that working on their site speed, if there isn't just a quick fix, it's it's overwhelming to them. I definitely fell into that group. Um, yeah. And what I ended up doing was I asked a lot of questions um, in the Mediavine Facebook group. I'd run something through, um, I think it's called the Page Speed Insights tool. I don't know if they've yeah, changed Google. the name. Yeah. They change Light, stuff all Google the time. Google Page Speed Insights and the <laughs> Lighthouse is now a part of it too. So yeah. Right. Um, so if I saw something on there I didn't understand, I asked for help. And a lot of times it was changing the plugins I used or mm -hmm. trying to figure out a way to eliminate something that's really slowing down my site or adding a plugin that resizes my images for me. So I'm not. Um, manually having to do it, but I'm not also serving these giant images to my audience that just mm -hmm. slow my site down. So um, it can be overwhelming, but there's a lot of easy things you can do. And if you're confused by something, just ask for help. Um, you can obviously pay for professional help if that's in your budget and that will get things done a lot faster. Or if you want to try to do it yourself, um, but always make sure you search the Facebook groups before you post stuff because I know um, when I've searched, sometimes I've found the answer before having to create a new post. And there are a lot of posts and it's easy to get lost in there, so. That search bar in our Facebook group is one of my very, very favorite mm -hmm. places to go because there are a peak. Our publishers are the best and they ask amazing questions. And a lot of times you can find, it's an, such an incredible resource. I love going in there to look for things. It's even better than Googling it but you can Google it. I said it here first. Okay, Dorothy, what about you? Tell me about how you, have you worked on page speed? Have you focused your attention on that? And yeah, I mean, um, if I'm being completely transparent, I pay someone to do it um, okay. because it's just, ah. I can't, it's too much. But I do, um, my. I think for a food blogger or for if you're a craft or anything where you have a lot of photos, because I do, I added photos to my, I started using more photos to make my content longer. Mm -hmm. um, and more photos is more site is your site seed so it's your yep. site slows down. So I definitely recommend using. I think it's Imagify is the one I that I use. Um, and or I'm always, short pixel, yeah, we have. The yeah, it's one of those two. Um, yeah. I think I've used both. I think I switched one because of some tech person told me to switch. But um, mm -hmm. definitely that is one of the number one things anyone right now can go and do that, and it will help. Fantastic. Yeah. Image size is huge. So when you're lengthening that content, you've also got to pay attention to the site speed, all of these mm -hmm. things. Um, okay. So Michelle, your question about where uh, the URL for the, the home post. So we actually got some results in Susanna's posting them, but I wanted to make sure we answered out loud on here. So our amazing publisher support team, we've com confirmed with them, ideally make a roundup for the post featured in the features video and link to that. So that's the, the URL for that video. Uh, double SEO bonus for internal link about that in just a second but second best is use one of the links from the post featured in the video so if you're not going to create that roundup post 
to show up for that featured video that you're creating, then go ahead and just link to one of the posts that you're featuring in the video itself. So that is your answer for that. Okay, um, whoop, we got another one too. Um, so she's, I'll just go on to another one. We'll get her question in just a second. So we, you can't talk about RPM without talking about SEO and without talking about site speed. All of these things go hand in hand and in our, in our perfect world, they coexist together and making improvements in one area will hopefully make improvements in another area. The in, increasing RPM or it, optimizing your user experience, the byproduct of that is increased RPM. So um, what about RPM and, and SEO? How do you find those things coexisting together? How do they interact? How do they complement? Um, when you do SEO work, how do you do SEO work? Let's start with um, Lance, start with me, start with you. Um, so I just started to get into SEO a little more heavily. Um, I ignored it for a long time. Um, I've gotten lucky with some posts in the past that rank well, but what I've found as far as SEO or the posts that tend to do well are the really in-depth posts that go into all the questions a reader has mm -hmm. about whatever they're searching for. They're trying to find a solution. Um, obviously more in-depth and longer posts, you know, and if you're showing pictures on how to do something that's step-by-step, -step, that's going to make it longer. That's going to help your RPM. So what tends to rank well in Google, at least for finance sites, also helps your RPM because you're creating an exhaustive guide on whatever these people are searching for. It's longer and more ads are going to be shown throughout it. Absolutely. What about you, Dorothy? What about SEO? Um, like what Lance just said when he said guide, that's kind of how I, when I create a post now or when I update an old post, that's what I think about. I think about I'm creating this guide for someone. What are all the questions they're going to have? I use um, like I definitely have put at least eight, one H2 tag and then a couple of H3s answering the questions, putting those keywords in there, um, finding other things that people search for, for those, um, for the main keyword of my post and popping those into there, into the post as well to try and, you know, answer all the different questions um, that someone might have being really thorough. Um, all of those things are really important. Absolutely. Thoroughness is so key and, and, making yourself that one-stop shop. So right. trying to predict or actually see what questions are viewers asking you in the post and can you incorporate those answers into the original post? What right. if someone's on Google, if they're on, if they're reading your post, what might, what else might they need to know and can you answer right. it within the context of the post? Keeping right. them on your site. And so another big part of keeping people on your site is that interlinking. And I'm mm -hmm. sure you guys, so do you have a rule? Uh, I am always told from, from our SEO, gurus here that three a minimum of three posts you need to link throughout the body of your of your text mm -hmm. yourself do you guys have a rule about that when you're when you're linking your own posts dorothy i try to do at least i think it's like five to ten i've heard also like i think every every seo person has something different that they say but i always at the like above the recipe card i always will put like a, it's like an h3 like you know other whatever you like or something like something like that and i put at least three i'll try to link to a category also um, and then I also try to put it throughout the post when it's reading, when, when people are reading, um, because some people are going to, a lot of people don't read. So people that aren't what? reading the post, yeah, no. a lot of people that aren't reading the post are reading the recipe. And so above the recipes, a few more links. And then I try and hit those also in the post for the people that actually are reading and want to, you know, have questions or whatever. And when it comes to questions, I'm also thinking too, like, what do people ask me all the time? Like, it seems ridiculous to me to have to put the same question like can you freeze this in every post i'm like well duh but i'm like people aren't reading people i have to remember people are coming from google they're not coming like, i have people that come every day to read my site but for the most part like they're not reading all these other posts they're just reading that one so i have to optimize yeah. that one post like it's a new person every single time who's never read anything else on my site yeah, absolutely. Thinking about how the readers are coming in the reader experience and, and we all as writers feel like we're being, you know, I'm a bad writer and being repetitive. I'm a bad writer. I'm right. talking. About, yeah. But people aren't reading all those posts. They're coming to you from right. a social media um, place or they're coming to you from a Google search result. So that's a different story. Uh, Lance, what right. about you? Talk, talk to me a little bit about interlinking and how you how you keep readers on your site. That was another thing that I was really bad at for a long time. Um, so my <laughs> my new posts, I'm definitely going through and I'm thinking, what other posts do I have on my site with, that would be extremely relevant to this? And then I also link to a couple of the more popular posts that might be slightly relevant. 
But one thing I do whenever I do post is I go back to my old posts and I link to that new post. So I try to find a few places in my old posts where I can link to the new posts and that helps as well. Absolutely. Very true that the, yeah, we just posted our post about the art of giving and receiving backlinks, which is a huge part of SEO. So um, what you said, Lance, is actually something that I've heard echoed by our uh, Nicole Johnson, who is our vice president of publisher support. She always said that she ignored SEO because it seemed too complicated or too hard. And once she started learning about it, it's now something that she just owns and uses all the time. And she actually get, did a great blog post that I would love for us to share here, um, the ultimate easy SEO checklist. So I would love for us to share that too. Mm -hmm. Um, it seems complicated and I think some people like to make it sound more complicated than it actually is with SEO. And, and I think mm -hmm. that it's just something that, uh, all, all of our publishers should own and know. Julianne Byer Dell said, do you interlink to the same post or category multiple times in your post or just once? Dorothy. Um, I try, sometimes I'll do it more than once. It depends on like what it is. Um, but I try to hit different things just because I don't want to be too repetitive, but like a lot of times if it's a top post um, and it's relevant, like it might be big, like I'm making this because I made this in the copy, but then I want to make sure and link to it back below because that's the one thing that, that's the one recipe they might want to go to because of it. Um, but I try to hit different things throughout yeah. the different links. Uh, Lance. Uh, it's funny you ask because this actually recently came up um, from a friend of mine. And when he asked, basically, if it makes sense to link to it naturally, you know, I mean, don't use the same anchor text right. in both cases. But if you're writing a post and it really would help your reader in two different spots, go for it. Um, but at the same time, if you're just repeating the same concept over and over again in the post, maybe you need to edit the post as well. So um, if you're linking to it more than once, just make sure that it's really beneficial to the reader. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually asking Amber, who is one of our co-founders and the co-host and co-creator of the Theory of Content podcast, which is all about the SEO things. And um, she said there's some, well, I don't know what that was, but it's not, some, someone's entertained and I'm glad. Uh, there's some argument to do uh, that multiple link for user experience, um, but but she said you're exactly right. What you said is, is perfect, that it's not gonna give you an SEO bump or advantage um, to link multiple times to the same post or category within that post. But if it's good for user experience, yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Okay. So um, have you guys ever experienced, we've had a lot of people, and I think if you searched for this in the Facebook group, like we encourage people to do, um, this, this will be a post. You have a traffic spike and you have an RPM drop. Have either of you ever experienced that? Uh, Lance, what about you? You were laughing knowingly. Uh, I mean, I haven't had any insane traffic spikes, but I definitely have times a month where my traffic goes up. And unfortunately, sometimes it's at the beginning of the month when the RPMs are already going down anyway. Um, but I have had some posts that get a ton of social traffic or something like that, and it does go down. And for me, it's just part of life. I make sure everything's running right and that my website's running how it should and the ads are still popping up. But beyond that, I just kind of wait for it to come back the next day. I mean, the advertisers aren't expecting to get all of that ad space that you're suddenly coming up with. So yeah. they're not, it's not in their budget. They're not prepared for that. That's a really, really great way of explaining that. Mm -hmm. And I very much appreciate you saying that. Yeah, talking about traffic spikes as ad space is fantastic. That's absolutely true. And the advertisers, that's very accurate. They're not used to that. They're not sure what to do with all of it. And they're also not sure um, they need to know that they can trust that traffic and it's not fake traffic. What about you, uh, Dorothy? Have you ever had a traffic spike RPM drop? Um I honestly don't think I've ever like looked hard enough to find that. But I, I mean, I do know that I've had traffic spikes again, like, you know, I'll have one in January and I'm like, Ugh, or in July or one of those times of the month when it's not super high. But I just know that like in the whole scheme of things, I know it'll come back and it'll be fine because as long as I'm giving my readers what they want, they're going to come back and people or Google will trust me and people will find me and it'll all work itself out. So it sounds like another just general piece of advice that you're both offering is not living or dying on these traffic spikes or one day of analytics. Yeah, exactly. I did that for a long time and it like, it was stressful. So finally I was just like, I have to check it just to make sure like, you know, it's not like down, you know what I mean or something, but I can't focus on it because that's just going to get me 
in my own head too much. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's very true. And living or dying on one day when it could just be an aberration. Now you want to make sure something isn't broken. And like Lance said, right, sure exactly. that those, yeah, you're having ads. Things are still working right. as they should be. Right. But that doesn't mean every single fluctu fluctuation sends you to the uh, the couch with the vapors. Like just right. <laughs> breathe through it, breathe through it. Um, <laughs> Jennifer Auer said, what if those traffic spikes follow a pattern year to year or month to month or season to season? Have you have you seen any traffic consistent traffic spikes, which kind of sounds like a bit of an oxymoron, but I mean for me it's usually because it's fourth quarter and at that point RPMs are going up anyway. Okay. Uh, Lance, anything about you? You said you hadn't had a lot of experience with traffic spikes. Right. Um, my traffic normally is a little bit higher at the beginning of the month. I don't know if it's because people are trying to get their budget done or whatnot. Probably um, so. But but I also don't have a site that doesn't have that little spike to compare it to that would be equal. So, I mean, maybe my RPM would be even lower if I didn't have that, you know. So it's just kind of one of those things. I know what to expect with my site, and you need to kind of know what to expect with your site. So if there is a problem, which has popped up a couple times, and every time Mediavine has, without asking, made me whole, um, you know to ask. So if you know during the middle of the month, your RPMs are normally pretty consistent, and then overnight you see it down 20 or 30%, send a message and ask. It's not going to hurt anything. They'll look and say, everything's fine or everything's not fine. And if it's not, they'll fix it and let you know what happened. So. Yeah, I know for a fact they take amazing care when they do these deep dives with your sites. When you write in with an RPM drop question, they do very diligent work to make sure that they understand, they know that everything's working, that everything's functioning as it should. And then they'll give you tips on, I mean, they're detectives. They will figure out what's going on. They will help you analyze it and they will help you optimize and get to where you need to be. So, so definitely email in. So, okay, we're, uh, we're running out of time. You guys are giving such great advice. So Q4 is just around the corner, which is very hard to believe, but it is. Are you doing anything now to get ready to um, really, really maximize that incredible buy time, that golden window of Q4? Dorothy, what about you? Um, I'm not a great planner when it comes to content. I mean, I am. I have a plan, and then like Taylor Swift releases her album, and I'm like, I have to make a cake. So that's kind of squirrel, <laughs> um, what happens to me, but I do try to like think about like, what am I going to do? And like this year I'm really focusing on updating old content. I mean, if you've been blogging more than a couple of years, you have tons of old content and go back and look at that. Are the photos fine? Can you just, up, can you just do a few changes and update it and move it forward? Um, and that sort of thing. Like, and then I'm trying, so I'm trying to really focus on that and focus on doing videos for my top posts for the season, either doing them or hiring them out so that the posts are optimized as much as they can, can be. Um, and just basically, and then for the rest of it, trying to think about what could be evergreen, but also be good for seasonal content. Like instead of making a cookie that has like red and green M&Ms, could I make a cookie that people make at Christmas, but would also make all year long? Excellent. That is great. I love that focus on evergreen content. What about you, Lance? Anything you're doing to get ready for Q4? Um, for me, there are a few things that are topical that I could probably write about. Uh, but the thing I would suggest most people do is go back at last year's Q4 and look and see what did well and what didn't and make sure that if there is a seasonal post in there that you have it optimized and that it's ready, whether it's search or Pinterest or wherever you're getting traffic from, make a plan to make that happen again. And if you can make it bigger. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I am going, let's talk about that. What is your process for updating an old post? Do you have a step-by-step -step guide that you go through as you're optimizing that content, Dorothy and Lance, any recommendations for that? I mean, I do, I do have, I definitely look at photos. Um, do they need to be redone or are they good enough that I can just re-edit and then make a new collage or whatever it is? Do I need a video? Should I make the video? Can I hire it out? It just depends on time-wise for that. Um, I add more content. I do the questions with the with the headings and all that. Make sure that the recipe is card is filled out, um, and then basically, yeah, those are the main things that I do. Oh, and then if I don't, if I'm going to move it forward, I ask myself, am I going to move it forward? Because I don't have dates in my URLs. That's a really good tip for people. Um, so if I if I'm going to move it forward, or if I'm going to leave it where it is, and then just send out like a email broadcast to pretend like I move it moved it forward. 
So in terms of you're talking about promoting the content once. Promoting it, yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Okay, fantastic. Lance, what about you? Um, my blog post style has changed over time, so I'll update it to the most recent style if it's an older post that hasn't been updated recently. And then if I'm getting traffic from search, I'll see what's performing around it and see if maybe I'm missing anything that other people are addressing, and I'll update that as well. Fantastic. So uh, we actually outline those steps in the RPM challenge and we're coming up to the perfect time to do that. So that's a part post series that has video with it. It has worksheets with it and we recommend everyone do that, but we do it every quarter, but especially ahead of Q4 and especially if you're in a blogging niche that does historically well in Q4. Now we know that advertisers spend money in Q4, which makes it magical for all niches, but there are specific niches like food and craft that are notoriously um, lucky and fortunate in Q4. So that's the time now to go in and start doing that challenge, making sure that you have optimized everything that's gonna get that traffic ahead of time. So for the final, for your final question, it's so sad that we're uh, almost out of time. Uh, I'm gonna have you guys do what are three things every blogger should do be doing to increase their RPM. So just give your three top tips. And also if uh, where people can get in touch with you before we let you guys go for the afternoon where people can reach you and um, maybe get access to the worksheet Dorothy's talking about or um, just some of the resources that you guys use would be amazing. But I'm gonna say before I get your last, the last question from my amazing guests is that next week is the last week of the summer of live. And then it is, it is crazy. It's hard to believe, but it is the truth. We are almost done. And while we've spent this whole month focusing on just strictly monetization next week for our final, for our final, um, our final episode, we are doing traffic building. And we've got Tanya Harris and Jen Fishkind, and we're very excited about it. It's our last one. Please join us. We're we're gonna go out with a bang. But for before I go, let everyone go. Um, so Dorothy, those top three tips, and Lance, those top three tips, and where people can get in touch with you. Um, for me, it would be video. Do video or add videos to your posts. Uh, right. Work on SEO. Um, work on the SEO and and being a resource, and then just relax a little bit. Like don't stress about it, you know, like watch it, but don't stress about it unless it drops really a lot. Um, and then if I, I will put the spreadsheet in the Facebook group, I guess, once I all okay. clean it up. Well, and, you can send it to um, us and we can actually post it in the comments if that's, okay. if that's okay. yeah. yeah, that's yeah. all good. Um, and if you have, if anyone has any questions, feel free to like send a message um, I, or, you know, you can send me an email and I'm welcome to answer any questions. I like helping people, so. We can tell from all the information you've given us. We and Dorothy's at Crazy for Crest, so let's make sure that we share that link in there and um, give people access to her. Lance, what about you? Top three tips. Um, I mean, I definitely agree with everything Dorothy said, but uh, I guess from a more uh, practical standpoint, as far as things you can do today, um, definitely consider increasing your font size, uh, focus on your top 10 posts, and then if you do have large blocks of text, please break them up. The more they're broken up, the more mm -hmm. lengthens your content and more opportunities for ads to get placed, so. Love all of those tips. Fantastic, and Lance, where can people reach you? Uh, moneymanifesto.com, I have a contact page and my social media is on there as well. Fantastic. You guys have had amazing uh, content to share and so many great resources. And we also, um, to go along with the idea of summertime living's easy, go ahead and breathe and relax and don't take everything quite so uh, seriously. Uh, the fluctuations do happen and it doesn't mean that everything on your site is broken and you're never going to be able to make a living this way again. So breathe, relax, have a cocktail. Um, and, and we encourage that if you do, if you don't drink, just read a great book, but relax. All right, everybody, thank you. A big, huge thank you to Lance and Dorothy for joining me this week. Thank you for your questions and for joining us. And we will see you next week for our final Summer of Live to talk about growing your traffic. Thank you guys again and have a great afternoon. Hi, thank you. Bye, thank Bye. you.